the pulpit from which our readers share the word of God and our pastors often preach is raised above the masses for obvious reasons. It is clearly easier and more effective to project one's voice to a large gathering when the speaker is in an elevated position. This easily discerned factoid, however, does not share the full story. Predating the Christian church, rabbis often read from scriptures from raised platforms. There are multiple instances in the Bible in which a person is urged to elevate oneself and share the good news. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 9 states, Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald the good news, lift up your voice in strength. In fact, the book of Matthew chapter 5 tells us, that Jesus himself went up into a mountain, and opening his mouth, he taught them. So it becomes evident that the public can see as a metaphorical mountain in which the good news may be proclaimed. Originally, however, the pulpit did not exist in its current form, but rather as a piece of equipment known as an ambo, reportedly derived from a Greek word meaning mountain or elevation. In early Christian churches, a single ambo was utilized expressly for the purpose of reading the gospel and the epistles. Stairs were on both sides of the ambo, so the gospel could be recited to the people and the epistles recited towards the altar. Eventually, however, another ambo was added to many churches, one for reading the gospel and one for the epistles. Eventually, sermons were added to the gospel side ambo. The ambo later lost favor and was replaced by the pulpit which was pushed more centrally located toward the altar. Many churches today have a separate lectern for reading scripture and a pulpit for preaching. What you see here at Abiding Love today is actually somewhat more evocative of a lectern rather than a true pulpit, used more often for the readings than for sermonizing.